Hello, so in this video, we're going to be talking about this thing called geometric Brownian motion. Okay, and so what we're going to actually try and do is apply Brownian motion um, to kind of share prices or asset, asset prices um, in finance, in financial derivatives. Okay, um, so basically, we presume that a share price, a share price will basically follow this kind of Brownian motion. So what we want to try and do is come up with this Brownian motion. So basically, a share price, we would expect a share price to kind of grow in an, exponent, in an exponential manner, because obviously the more shares that you've got, uh, or as you go forward in time, you know, say if your share price is doubling each time, okay, then obviously that's going to be an exponential manner, or, you know, it will follow some kind of exponential graph. So basically, you know, if this is share price against time, so the value of your share against time, it should follow some exponential manner. It should grow exponentially, okay? Uh, and this is, you know, your start price, S0. So basically, it's going to start at S0, and it's going to grow um, by some factor over time, an exponential factor over time. This is just your standard, you know, exponential growth. Um, you start at S0, okay? You grow exponentially over time by some factor alpha, okay? And that's what's going to, that's effectively where, where, um, where, where share price, you know, share price basically wants to grow in this way. But of course, we know, we know that share price, and well, I can just tell you that share price follows this thing called Brownian motion. So therefore, we need to basically include some kind of Brownian motion um, into it. And in actual fact, you know, Brownian motion. So in other words, it's going to grow in this way, but effectively, there's going to be kind of, you know, it's going to grow um, with this kind of jagged motion. It's not going to grow in like one neat, smooth little curve. So effectively, that Brownian motion comes in. It's going to, you know, it follows the same kind of shape as the standard exponential graph, you know, the standard exponential graph. But the jaggedness comes because it follows an, it follows Brownian motion. It follows Brownian motion, okay? So we're going to have to take into account that Brownian motion, okay? And we just take into account with it uh, with an extra term. So in other words, it's Brownian motion um, times some constant, effectively. And that constant is known as beta. So it's beta times some constant. Beta, you know, it doesn't really matter what that value of beta is. Uh, in actual fact, you know, there, there is, it's, uh, it's very difficult to measure what beta is. Um, but yet it's very, very important. Okay, it's very, very important. Um, in fact, whole industries in finance are dedicated to measure what this value of beta is. But for the time being, if you can just kind of spot, well, okay, this is, this is an exponential growth. OK, plus some kind of ex this term here just contributes to the, um, the Brownian motion. OK, this kind of jaggedness to it. And if you just understand that for the time being, then that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. OK. Um, OK, and actually, this is the share price at strictly speaking, it's the share price. Go away. This is the share price at some time T. So we actually call it S, t S a small little T. And that's just simply the share price at some particular time. OK, so it depends on T. Right, now let's try and fiddle this. Let's try and fiddle this. Um, okay, okay, let's try and fiddle with this. So I'm going to divide by S0. So I'm going to end up with ST over S0 equals E to the alpha T plus beta ET. Yeah, I'm going to end up with that. Um, then let's get rid of this E. Let's get rid of this E. Um, and let's just take the logarithm of both sides then. So that implies that the logarithm or natural logarithm of ST over S0 equals alpha t plus beta bt, beta bt, okay? So that's what that equals. Now this term here, this term here will contribute to the mean. This contribute will, con will contribute to the mean. So it contributes to the mean, okay, this term here. And this term will contribute, well, this term basically, basically means that the mean is zero um, of this term. Mean is zero. Um, and so basically, if you try and model, if you try and model alpha t, plus beta t, beta bt, <laughs> beta bt, um, that is kind of exponential, you know, that is kind of, if you remember, if you remember that um, bt, you know, Brownian motion is normally distributed, under standard normal distribution, uh, sorry, under standard Brownian motion, uh, Brownian, you know, which is what we're considering, Brownian motion is distributed by a normal distribution of mean zero and variance uh, t. OK, variance T. OK, but now, so how will this, so basically what I'm trying to do is write this in some kind of, you know, it's very, very close to this. You know, this this here is very, very close to this BT is normally distributed under standard normal distribution. OK, and so basically I know it's going to be normally distributed, but what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Um, well, this term here 
tells me that the mean is going to be zero because it's standard Brownian motion. So therefore, the mean is going to be zero. OK, but so this term here, the mean is zero. But I've, I'm adding to that. I'm adding to that an alpha t. So if you like, I've got zero plus my alpha t. OK, and likewise for my variance. So therefore, this this is just going to become alpha t, right? This is going to become alpha t. So then what's my variance doing? Well, my variance is going to be t, but it's going to be multiplied by some constant. And that constant is my beta. That constant is my beta because, you know, I've got my bt here. I've got my bt here. Adding alpha t to my variance is not going to make a huge bit difference because, remember, variance is just the amount of spread. So the alpha t, if you like, is just translating you know, my terms, it's not going to affect my spread. Spread. It's not going to, you know, affect my spread by any means. If you like, you know, my variance between two points, say if this is, this is like three and this is seven, for example, I know it's a really contrived example, but then say, for example, if I add, if I add some terms, so let's say, for example, if I add two to it, then this term is just going to be moved to here. So this is going to be moved to five and this term is just going to be moved to here. So it's going to be moved to nine. Okay. So now I'm just considering that. So it's not going to affect the spread. It's going to be exactly the same spread, effectively. But multiplying it by beta, so it's going to be t, but multiplying it by beta is going to make a huge difference because I'm basically going to affect the variance. How is it going to affect it? Well, it's not going to affect it by beta. It's going to be affected by um, beta squared. Because if you remember, if you multiply a random variable by a constant, if you find the variance of it, then it's just going to become that constant squared then. okay? Go back to your kind of second year. So basically what I'm saying is the variance or if you have the variance of x, say, for example, okay, um, is equal to, I don't know, is equal to, uh, yeah, okay, let's say that's equal to, no, I don't want to say that, let's equal to, to a, okay, then the variance of k times x, okay, is going to become k squared times a, okay, so it's going to affect it by, by you know, square, basically. So this is now what it becomes. This is quite messy, isn't it? Let me write it out below. So I've got basically alpha t, Alpha t plus beta t is normally distributed, normally distributed by a mean of zero plus alpha t, so alpha t um, times beta squared times t. If you at least half followed that, then well done, quite frankly, um, because you know you don't need to kind of understand the ins and outs of it. But if you can at least half understand, at least kind of see where things come from, I think it makes a huge difference. Uh, but of course, this alpha t plus beta t, what was that equal to? That was equal to natural logarithm of st over s naught. So I can just replace this with a natural logarithm of st over s naught. Okay, so that's normally distributed by alpha t beta squared times t. Okay, so that's basically what we end up with. And this is what's known. This is what's known as log normal. So in other words, we can say that the ratio of the share prices, so this is a share price at time t compared to the share price at the beginning. So the ratio of the share prices is what's known as log normal. The reason why it's called log normal, I wonder if you can guess, we've got a normal distribution there and we've got a log there. So when we put the two together, we've got log normal. Okay, log normal. Okay, and it's a log normals curve. So let's have a look at the log normal curve. So this is a log normal curve. Okay. Well, what's a, what's a normal curve going to look like? Well, a normal curve, a normal curve is just going to look like this. It's just going to look something like this. It's a bell-shaped curve, right? Uh, but the log part just basically means that it's skewed. It just makes it skewed, so it's a bit like a stretch. So it's going to effectively look like this. Okay, so that's what a log normal curve looks like. It's just a it's a normal curve but just skewed. Okay, um, and we go through the origin as well. Okay, so what is now geometric Brownian motion going to look like? Geometric Brownian motion, GBM for short. Well, I've drawn it above. I've drawn it above. It's just this graph here. So we know, we know that the, um, we know that the, you know, if I just write S equals S naught or ST equals S naught e to the alpha t, I know that that's going to look like this. I know that's going to look like this, okay? But then if I plus a Brownian motion term, then that's when I get my kind of jaggedness. So this is what geometric Brownian motion effectively looks like, okay? So it's exactly the same as what I've just drawn in there, right? So the spikes are just contributed by the beta bt, okay? Um, and this really is fundamental, quite honestly. This is fundamental um, to kind of... Um, you know, geometric brown emotion is really fundamental in everything that you're going to do from this point forward. OK, I'm just going to talk about geometric brown emotion. If you can follow what I'm doing here, this is where it all comes from.